All right, everybody, welcome back to Beans No Ball in the week eight edition of Sunday Chat. Obviously, we got a full slate of games to go this week. Got a lot. Finally, finally, a good amount of more games to talk about since, you know, we've had obviously the, the buys have been starting. So last full slate until week 12. So, Christian, let's just start it off with our new segment for this week. Yeah, so let's get right off with the, uh, with the rematch of the uh, ASU West battle. The Denver Broncos are going to be hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're going to potentially be getting our first snow game of the NFL season. So this is going to be a really good one to look at, um, especially with um, both teams on how they're looking through the year. The Chiefs looking high powered once again. And the Broncos struggling for, you know, I think for the seventh consecutive year in a row, which, you know, it's tough to see. But the snow game is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of... Uh, we're going to see how both teams develop in, in the snow throughout the whole game. I expect the Broncos to, you know, kind of, you know, uh, kind of get held back a bit because of it. But with the Chiefs and snow, I mean, we see how they played before, you know, good outcomes with them. But it's going to be a good game regardless. Yeah, of course. Looking back to a game they did have in 2019 in the snow and arrowhead. But of course, staying on the topic of this game, uh, some news for the Broncos and their wide receiver, Jerry Judy. So we've obviously heard a lot of the reports. We've seen just, I mean, he's been in the news for a lot. I mean, we know the Steve Smith situation and just in general, he, he's he been a, a target for trade rumors. And it um, it is reported that the Broncos do have a, a pretty good offer on the table for him. Uh, and they aren't uh, willing to accept it at the moment, which... I mean, you would think, I mean, all things considered, I mean, sure, it's it, it comes down to probably the front office not wanting to admit, you know, their fault in, you know, wasting a first round pick on a, I mean, we could just say by now, a, a probably a bust wide receiver at this point. I mean, who, who knows, maybe if they do move Jerry Judy into a, a different team, maybe he does research his career. If, I mean, but there's there's a lot of things that, that's work, that he has to work on, especially you know, in his attitude that we've seen uh, in past years. But um, if they finally wise up and uh, make the deal, if they get a better deal, um, so I'll, I'll to wait and see. But uh, time to wait and see what he can do to research his career. Yeah, so staying on the, on the, the news of the trade rumors, with, especially on the AFC side with Derrick Henry. Um, a lot of rumors going on with Derrick Henry. I believe, you know, my Cowboys were rumored to, you know, be in talks, but obviously confirmed that no offer was made by Jerry Jones, typical him. And it was, I believe, two other teams. I don't have it in mind right now. But uh, the Titans did confirm that they will not be trading uh, Derrick Henry despite all the trade rumors. And honestly, I think this is, uh, you know, pretty stupid of the Tennessee Titans just, you know, giving away all their star players right there. I mean, sure, yeah, um, they could get their probably on the way for getting draft capital. I mean, you saw already Kevin Byer, but, you know, for a fifth rounder, I mean, the Titans still got a lot of work to do, especially with how this assembled that whole team, especially in the quarterback situation. So Derrick Henry could, would have just, you know, um, ruined, ruined everything for them. But hey, draft capital, you know, you never know what, what could happen. But Derrick Henry, he will be remaining as a Tennessee Titan for the time to come. And, you know, with him in the run game, we're going to be play a big part with the Titans. But obviously, with that going, um, it just all depends on, on the quarterback situation. And especially, I think, believe that Will Levis will be getting the start. So... Obviously, new more mishaps with the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, I mean, obviously, probably should have been time to let everything go for the Titans, but we'll see how they go from there. Uh, more now, some injury-related news that we'll have two pieces for you guys. Started with someone near and dear to me. Of course, Jalen Ramsey makes his season debut this week against the New England Patriots. Obviously, it's major for him coming off of that big knee surgery after the injury he picked up in training camp. And to see that uh, he was expected to return until December, was kind of pushing to maybe bring that up to November. He's returning in late October. Just a, a great rehab for him. Just I mean, everything went well for him. It's really good to see that you know he is going to finally get back out on the field. Obviously, as much as it hurts to see him in a different uniform, he still is one of my favorite players uh, in this league. So, I mean, always nice to see you know a, a player you know of this caliber. You know, finally get get back from injury and uh, really get to ball out. And he's playing the Patriots, so uh, I know they're coming off a really good game uh, last week. But it, it all comes down to you know seeing, you know, can they string these games together and can Mac Jones actually stay competent? Yeah, and obviously, now probably the biggest headline of the week: Brock Purdy clear concussion protocol after suffering it against the Minnesota Vikings. Um, so it looks like he's gonna get the start. Aaron Donald will, unless oh, excuse me, not Aaron Donald. Um, 
Sam Darnold. God, yeah, Sam Darnold. I, I just blanked out for a moment. Yeah, so Sam Darnold, he's not, he will not be making the start. Brock Purdy will be remain as a starter for today's game against the Cincinnati Bengals. I think once again, I know how we had our video up about Sam Darnold and how that star will, you know, play a key part of the future of the Niners. But with Purdy starting, this is going to be another important start for him to see is he really a great player without his, you know, star players. And especially against a team against the Cincinnati Bengals, who we've talked about uh, in the past recent springs, they're having they're having a great resurgence. Um, they're back to three and three at an even record. So Cincinnati kind of getting on the heels with Jamar Chase, and we saw how Jordan Addison was able to cook him. Jamar Chase is going to be a good one. So with Brock Purdy with no weapons, this is going to be another game to depict whether is Brock Purdy a system quarterback? Is he the real deal, or is he just? A guy who just has to rely on his weapon. So this is gonna be another great game to look at and to see if that concussion, you know, if it wasn't severe, which I really hope it's not, but we'll see if that concussions are gonna really play a big part in this game. And that's gonna wrap up the news of the recent news, a uh, couple of headlines of uh, this week. So we're gonna move straight along to our fantasy. Our lineups will be on the screen right here. So um, I managed to win my matchup uh, last week. Obviously, uh, you know, it's pretty. It's pretty cheap shot. My guy had Daniel Jones and Bijan, so you know, kind of got the easy win right there. But tweaked my lineup a bit, not too much. My stars are back uh, like usual. I did bench Ridley though uh, for this week for uh, for Pickens. So we're gonna see from there. And uh, Jordan Addison once again, he's gonna be my other star, uh, my key player of um, the uh, fantasy this week. He saw uh, he had a great, great game against the Minnesota Vikings. So I'm substituting for Justice Jefferson for the time he will be uh, missing for the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, they're playing Jacksonville. Um, it's a pretty, pretty decent Jacksonville team with a pretty competent defense that you know can get the most of receivers. But I expect Jordan Addison to you know have a pretty decent game, which I'm really gonna expect them to do. Green Bay. Hmm. They got Green Bay this week, not. Not Jacksonville. I'm so sorry about that. Um, Green Bay, it was just even better. They got a you know a team that's you know really struggling right now, especially in the quarterback situation, and that defense is not really holding up. So Jordan Addison, I really expect to have a monster game right then and there. And then another uh, uh, key uh, component to my fantasy lineup this week is going to be the Chiefs defense against the Denver Broncos. Like I mentioned, it's a snow game. Uh, Broncos, especially with how they're looking at, I don't really don't see you know. Big, uh, big game for the Broncos, let alone in the snow in Kansas City with what they got and how, you, let alone they play in the snow and how they play, you know, in regular, regular time. I expect them to, you know, have a pretty big game against the Broncos, especially, you know, how leading into one position game in the last matchup. But I expect a pr pretty big, uh, pretty big game for the Chiefs defense. Yeah, of course, I mean, always in a snow game and again, any game with inclement weather, you expect a low scoring game. So that's definitely working in your favor. So moving on to my team, of course, it'll be right here on screen. I'll just start off with Diggs, man, on Thursday night. I mean, about a about an average, a little below average for, for stuff on Diggs standards. But I mean, still uh, got me got me a good 16 points to, to start off the week up 16-0 on my opponent at the moment. You know, as you say, you know, you had you did pick up a win. I am starting to slowly pick it up with, you know, a couple of trades I've been making. The team's finally picking it up on a little, a little two game win streak. See how much that keeps going. But uh, of course, a uh, key factor that I'm going to really be looking at is um, back to that snow game. Travis Kelsey, is he really going to be able to to keep his production? Like, you know, like I said, it, when it, with inclement weather, you usually expect the run game to be more prevalent. You know, pass, the pass game is going to struggle if, you know, the ball gets slippery, if, you know, just anything like that. So how much are the Chiefs really going to be throwing the ball in this game? Is Kelsey really going to be getting that production or is he gonna get you know regular tight end numbers in this game which of course uh a bad game for him is probably one a uh, pretty average pretty pretty good game for a lot of tight ends in this league so we'll see how it goes for him and of course well i just realized i didn't even switch out my defense so i'll probably have to go in there last minute and uh, make a move probably don't want to have the commanders against the eagles right there so I, I will have to make a move there i just did realize that but of course uh let's just move that right into cash or trash uh, as I just alluded to right now, uh, we are talking about tight ends. We finally circle back around on the skill position tree, and let's just get it uh, started off right here. My cash tight end of the week is going to be Mark Andrews. Favorable matchup for him against Arizona. Um, of course, we know the Cardinals have been a team to really, um, really pack a punch, be a good team to uh, give anyone a good surprise. Obviously, we saw it well, with your Cowboys how they really did have a a sound defensive game uh, at the end of the day and 
you know, at the tight end position, you know, Mark Andrews can be, you know, up and down, but he he's been um, he's been picking it up as of late. So I I feel he's gonna have a pretty solid game. And it's for trash. Yeah, as much as it hurts me to do it, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Tyler Higby. It's, I mean, uh, uh, the easiest way to put. It, I mean, it's it's against your Cowboys defense. I would love to see a win. Um, even if it's a win, even if the the Rams play great, he really hasn't been involved in this offense um, in the in the past couple weeks. Um, all he did have was a pretty a, a pretty good game against the Bengals in Week Three. Apart from that, uh, it hasn't been much production. Kind of been running through the receivers, so I'm gonna have to throw him 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 in for trash. Yes, the for now my picks, my cash pick is gonna be Dallas Goddard. Uh, you know, I tried sneaking in Laporta, but I forgot he plays Monday, so obviously that can't count. So I sticking with Goddard. Um, I was honestly kind of like, you know a little spe- uh, skeptical on picking Goddard since they're playing the Commanders, and you know, Commanders. I was for them. Yeah, you know, commanders are known for breaking streaks. We saw what they did last year against them. That's what I kind of a little skeptical on. But I'm like, look, Dallas Goddard, he's been having some pretty, pretty, pretty good games fantasy wise. So had to roll with the trash. I'm gonna give you cash. And then with my trash pick, I'm gonna go Hunter Henry of the Patriots. I mean, they're going, to, they're going against the Dolphins. Um, we see how the Dolphins they played against the Patriots uh, already. Um, the Patriots, they just, they, I mean, yeah, they got that big one against Buffalo. But Hunter Henry, he isn't the number one for, the, I believe it is Gasicki, who is their number one uh, tight end. So Hunter Henry is the backup to Gasicki. So I really don't see much production going on from Hunter Henry. So that's why I really got the easy, uh, hopefully, cash pick on this one, let alone them playing the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, so before we wrap this up, I do realize I skipped out on our recap of last week. So, of course, we did do receivers. I'll just, you know, sneak that right back in. And it was a pretty mediocre week, of course. Uh, Christian, you did soundly beat me in the cash side. Amon Ra, even in a loss, had a really good game for himself. And Cooper Cup in a situation that we did expect him to really start getting more of the ball and Puka's little run to come to an end. Poco went off and Cup had a little short production, so we can see it's probably gonna. I mean, it's good signs for me to see that you know Puka's still gonna be involved. And as for trash, uh, two receivers that actually had you know relatively you know sound games in Judy and Palmer, but Judy did have a little bit a little bit less production, so of course I did pick up a, a trash win here. Uh, even that out, you're up eight six on the year so far, so let's see how much. Uh, this will this will go move forward. We'll see how much these tight end picks can uh, cut into that. Of course, now that will wrap us up in this Sunday chat. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, got a full slate, uh, full 16 games uh, total this week. So uh, let's obviously, and of course, big game right in the early slate. Of course, for the two of us, as we've been alluding to ever since uh, our earlier video this week. Got a lot of bragging rights in store, so can't wait to get into that game. Uh, barring anything else, we will be seeing you guys for the weekly recap, which we'll see who does end up with those bragging rights. And um, to close this out, you know, obviously, uh, always appreciate all the support. Anyone who does wake up with us early for these videos, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys soon.